Good morning, everyone. My name is Winona. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I'm the leader of Busted Knuckles. That's the adult recovery ministry from Roadhouse Biker Church out in San Bernardino, California. Hope you guys are having a great morning. We are going to be in the book of Matthew today, but before we get started, let's just open up in a word of thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with just grateful hearts, Father. We're grateful that, that you give us your scripture and you give us your word that teaches us how to be more like you, Jesus. And so, Father, we're grateful for the tools that, that you do give us for our toolbox from your word, Father, teaching us humility and gratefulness and, and empathy towards others, Father. We're grateful for this. And, Lord, I just pray for each person watching this video and their families. I pray for our nation as we're going through these chaotic times. Father, I just pray that your hand and your will be done across this nation. Father, we just thank you for what you've blessed us with. In your son's name, amen. Amen. So like I said, we are in the book of Matthew today. So grab your Bibles. It's a short one today. It's Matthew 9, and it's verses uh, 10 through 13. Yeah, 10 through 13. And just a little segue into this. Um, in these verses, Jesus is having dinner with a man named Matthew. Well, I've got hair in my face. This is not Matthew who wrote the scripture. This is Matthew who was a Jew, but he was appointed a tax collector. <gasps> da, da, da. And so he's having dinner with, with this tax collector. And Matthew, he, he is a recent convert over to Christianity, but not everybody knows about it yet. And so Matthew is hosting this dinner. Well, of course, he has Jesus. Well, he invites his fellow tax collectors and sinners over for dinner. And you know who's watching all of this going on. We know, we know. So let's get started. It is Matthew, and it's verse 10 through 13. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. So there's Matthew. He is kind of that bridge between the sinners and tax collectors, and Jesus. So he is bringing these two together. Way to go, Matthew. When the Pharisees saw this, there it is, they asked his, his disciples, why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, is it not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick? But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. So there it is, you know. Um, it, it's true, you know. We we need to be open to to visit, sit, and talk with with people that are less than what we are actually, you know, um, we need to give everyone that benefit. And that's what Jesus is doing. And so in my study Bible, it says here, when he visited Matthew, Jesus hurt his own reputation among the religious elite in order to reach out to those who were lost. Matthew, his reputation hadn't caught up with his new life as a disciple, but here it is. He became that bridge for Jesus' message to Matthew's past associates, for those sinners, for those tax collectors. We should not be afraid to reach out to people who are living in sin. God's message changes people, and it changes their friends, too. So as I've, I've mentioned many times, when people know that you've become a Christian, people know that you're in recovery, they're watching you. They're keeping an eye on you. They want to see how you act and what you're doing and all of that. But if you are acting more positive in your in your loving life, they're going to want that. And they're going to gravitate towards you. And you become that bridge between your, your past, you know, your friends that are not believers and Jesus' message. You become that bridge, just like Matthew, the tax collector, did here. You know, and, it, and it's, it's great. You know, and the Pharisees, they were constantly trying to trap Jesus. And they thought that his association with these low lives was the perfect opportunity to bring this to light. They were more concerned about their own appearance of holiness than helping the people, helping them. They helped them with criticism, not encouragement, with outward respectability rather than help. They worried 
about what they look like and what people perceive them. But God is concerned for all people, including the sinful and the hurting ones. The Christian life is not a popularity contest. Following Jesus' example, we should share the gospel with the poor, the immoral, the lonely, and outcast, not just with the rich, moral, popular, and powerful. So Jesus reached out to all them tax collectors and all them sinners because he loved them, and he knew they needed that message. It's like he said, is it not the, the sick that need a doctor? The ones that are well, they don't need the doctor. But Jesus knew who needed him, who needed to hear his word. Amen? So we are in our Life Recovery Devotional. We are step eight, and it's day 26, and it is called Full of Mercy. In families where addictions are forceful, there's usually someone who falls into the role of being superhuman and self-righteous. In the family system, this person balances out the identified addict who feels subhuman. If we are one of the self-righteous ones, it's harder for us to identify ourselves because we don't look sick. We seem to be stable and have it all together. However, it can become very lonely as we separate ourselves from everyone whom we perceive to be below us. The Pharisees once asked why Jesus associated with sinners. Healthy people do not need a doctor. Sick people do. For I have come to call not those who think they're righteous, but to those who know they are sinners. And that's another version. It's nine, Matthew 9, 12, and 13. That's the NLT version. Here's God's view of the self-righteous. This one is like, oh, this is from Isaiah. They say to each other, don't come too close or you will defile me. I am holier than you. Those people are like a stench in my nostrils, an acidic smell that never goes away. And that's Isaiah 65, 5. Gosh, I hope, I hope I've never said that or felt that way, but I'm sure I have. And I, and I ask for forgiveness. You know, I do. We may not realize how harmful self-righteousness can be. We can be hurting others by our lack of mercy. Even though we're doing all the right things, self-righteousness is hard to see in ourselves. We may need to ask our loved ones if this type of attitude has harmed them. Then we need to be willing to really listen to the answer they give us. Let me read that again. We may need to ask our loved ones if this type of attitude, that self-righteous attitude, has harmed them in any way. Then we need to be willing to listen, to really listen to the answer that they give. As we're becoming willing to make amends, mercy begins to grow in our hearts. There was something that I read about the self-righteous. There it is. You know, that self-righteous attitude, and I'm sure that we've all guilt, been guilty of it at one time or another. Those who are sure that they are righteous can't be saved because the first step in following Jesus is acknowledging our need and admitting that we don't have all the answers. Can I get an amen? So we need to admit our need, our helplessness. We don't have all the answers. That's what scripture's for. This is the main tool in that toolbox that God has given us to deal with life. Amen. And especially in recovery, we need to stay strong in this. So you guys have a great day today. And I encourage you to get in the word. Get in the word. All right. God bless.